connected to electronics all day with what I do. And yesterday was really strange. And now this one is taking its time. Here we go. Okay. I'm going to, okay. Yeah, we good. All right. Let's see. We got one person in the house. <laughs> Maybe well, they didn't give up. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. We're going to get started here in a minute with uh, Yvonne Perry. We haven't talked to her in about a year and a half. And it was a good show last time. It was a really yeah. good show. I remember some of the details, which is kind of uh, given this energy. <laughs> to remember anything. Short term memory, somewhere beyond uh, a year, a year and a quarter. <laughs> okay. We're going to play our intro real quick. We'll be right back. <laughs> spray my Merlin spray my friend gave me <laughs> Any, anything to try to uh, stabilize you know people talk about grounding integrating balancing stabilizing but I, I don't know about you but it's a uh, it's been uh, very different the last couple of weeks and, and I know we've been saying this for the whole journey since in our honor about 2012. Mm -hmm. Welcome back, Yvonne Perry. It's good to have you here. Thank you for coming in, sharing space with us and honoring us with your presence. I just started to read Yvonne's book, Celestial Shamanism. Mm. There we go. You said, what do you want to talk about? I said, well, here we go. Well, <laughs> but, but, isn't, but isn't this how it works in all this craziness, the uh, synchronicities, yeah. the sequential, the se sequential unfoldment? Yeah. You know, as we get more expanded and deal with everything that brings, you know, it's not it's not about what we, we've left behind anymore. It's about the new aspects of our lives as they've been altered, including like just basic human interaction, communication. Mm. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, so you have a book, Celestial Shamanism. Yes. Is that your first book? No, that's a uh, long, uh, long in a line. <laughs> that oh, was okay. That, line. that part I didn't remember. I did remember <laughs> that you grew up. Southern Baptist. Yeah, you know. yeah. And you were very, very devout, and uh, and it came out in your uh, in your story. It was a great story. I would really, now that I think about it, I would really uh, recommend watching uh, the show we did about a year and a half ago. You can uh, Google it, mm -hmm. you know, or you can look on YouTube or even in my archives on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, celestial shamanism. And now I remember you've written what over ten books, fourteen books, probably. Like yeah, I've lost yeah. count. <laughs> <laughs> I live in the now. <laughs> yeah, right. Every all that stuff that we've done as of about two minutes ago doesn't mean anything. Yeah, it means a lot actually because when I uh, this morning I was excited about getting on your show. I went to my Outlook and I checked the time. Yes, two p.m. And so I looked at my uh, watch and I'm like, oh. It's only 1230. I can go and take my walk. And so out the door yeah. I went talking to my mom and I got cut off the phone with her. We had been talking about time change, which is coming next weekend. Mm. And I'm like, I got to be really careful about, you know, staying on the new t schedule once that and make sure that, you know, my clients know our time changed in U.S. and all that. Mm. And I, she dropped. It's like, well, where'd you go? And as soon as I, she dropped and I got a message, <laughs> are you coming on? I'm like, 
yeah. <laughs> from Morgan. Uh, See, that's what I'm talking about, though. But that's what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> but that's what I'm talking about. It's like it's like uh, it, you can't make that stuff up. Mm -mm. <laughs> and then you you called me when you were walking. I said, just take your time. Yeah. And and I'm not saying that you know because of this specific situation, but just maybe this is uh what we're coming into is you know, how we handle the energy and just mm -hmm. respect it. You know, no rushing, no deadlines. I don't know how we're going right. to schedule stuff. I don't know how we're going to schedule stuff. I'm wondering stuff right that. Yeah. yeah. Because we're jumping mm -hmm. timelines like crazy. Mm -hmm. I'll yeah. be in one timeline and then all of a sudden snap. Uh, something different. And then it'll go right back. I've had three instances within just the last couple of months where I knew I was somewhere else in a timeline different than what I've I was at when I started and one was yesterday when I, I started out to go pick up my taxes. They called and said, Oh, your return's ready. And I'm going, okay, well, I got time to do that. So out the door I went and I couldn't remember if I actually got in the car or if I was in the car. And yet I'm looking out the window and going, I'm in the car. I think, <laughs> I think I'm in the car. I better yeah. pull over and make sure mm. it's like I was still at home and I was in the car and I'm like, this is do 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 do. <laughs> Yeah. But, you we, know, the, the other time was the church's fried chicken went out of business and they had a for lease sign there. That was about a month ago that I saw that. And I went back through there the other day. There were cars wrapped all the way around in the, in the drive through And I'm like, Whoa, wait a minute. And the chicken special sign was out front. You know, <laughs> I'm like, okay, well maybe I didn't see that for lease thing. A few minutes later, I'd gone to pick up something at Kroger and I came back through there, passed by the same way. And I'm like, Oh my goodness! That's for some police sign is back. What just happened? It's the uh, it's the Mandela effect uh, on steroids. <laughs> on steroids, right? They said twenty twenty one's like twenty twenty on steroids. <laughs> we thought it was getting better, right? Yes. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. Somebody came on uh, a couple of days ago, and, and through their channel, they had, they had received the information that twenty twenty uh, was it more people awakened in 2020 than in the last 10 years combined. Probably so. Yeah. yeah. I, I never thought of it that way, but that's another way to look at it because that pretty much parallels how all of our growth is and yes. our experiences such as that. Right. Yeah. I get it. I get in the car sometimes, not too often, like probably once or twice a month over the last few months. And, and I had, and I'll be driving and I'll be going, Oh my God, I'm driving. You know, like almost like, how do I drive? <laughs> I feel like I'm like 16, mm -hmm. 15 years old trying to learn how to drive. Yeah. So how's this uh, Celestial Shaman, uh, how's it different from your other books? Uh, what's the story behind it? What made you write well, this? One? This one has been in the works since about 2014, I guess, right after I published the Light Language Emerging book. And I began doing these workshops and classes at Sweet Home when I was there. I'm, I'm no longer uh, and I no longer have the retreat center because I've gone through a divorce. But anyway, that, no, that uh, welcome to the apocalypse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's your, there's your uh, zero point opportunity. Right? <laughs> that was uh, a reset, right? That X, was yeah, exactly. A reset. But ex-spouses so, are a great, uh, a great uh, opportunity for zero pointing. It might take oh, a few yeah. years. It might take Absolutely. a few years, even in the ascension. Yeah, go ahead. I'm sorry. And, and sometimes it feels like we were never married. We were yeah. together 19 years, and sometimes it feels like that is not even a part of my life. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah, that's kind of weird too. But anyway, so I was uh, sitting on this book and I was accumulating material from the t classes I was teaching. There was something on soul retrieval. There's uh, a good portion on light language. Um, what else do we do? And, and I was just teaching other people what I'm doing and they're going, oh, I do that too. And so it was a compilation of I do this and, and oh yeah, I'm time traveling and oh yeah, I'm at two places at once. And so I begin to see that this is common. Mm -hmm. This is, this is not just me. There's yeah. a lot of people that are doing similar work. They're working with the grids. They're working yeah. with, with um, celestial beings. They're working with uh, psychic surgeons and technicians that are not even in a skin suit. And mm -hmm. I began to find out, you know, you know, all this stuff that I thought made me weird and different is a lot more common than I thought. I just, right. found, just found my tribe. Mm 
Yeah. And uh, <laughs> welcome to welcome to Soldier, where all the weirdos and crazy people are. <laughs> oh, I feel I feel right at home. <laughs> all the black sheep, yeah. all the black sheep's transformed to golden child. Uh, but yeah. you know that's a, that's a good point because one of the challenges I think you know there's always that yin yang effect, right? One of the challenges of of um, you know downloading or channeling or whatever you want to call it, you know, opening up code, opening up. It's a challenge to the ego. <laughs> I mean, if you look back a few years ago, the people that came out first uh, that were really, you know, public, uh, I mean, they were, you know, I'm uh, connected to this essence or this archangel. And I'm not saying people don't do that now. And I'm not saying there's anything wrong with it, but I have seen a shift to where, you know, I've had a lot of people come on the show like yourself, practitioners, and they'll be like, you know, I mean, they've just changed so much. You know, it, the the voice is becoming more of a singular voice. Mm -hmm. uh, their their modalities and processes are being dropped or modified. Had a lot of them come on here and say, "I don't know what's going to happen." Uh, they come in, and every one of them's different now. You know, so that's a good sign, though, because the, it's a lot for the human to accept yeah. what we really are—divine, human, uh, eternal, Absolutely. whatever you want to call it—and that's really what it boils down to, I guess, because if you can lick, if you can knock that domino down, all of them come down. That's right. Remembering who we are. I think that's one of our greatest missions. I addressed this in the, in the book that are the celestial shaman book. What is my mission? What is my mission? Why am I here? Your mission is to be here, feet on the ground and remember who you are and mm. start doing that. As you get away from all the other programming, you will come into your own authenticity and then you'll find what it is you're here to do. Yeah. But if you go seeking what I'm here to do and you miss the divine connection, you still, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you're still floundering. Yeah. Yeah. Getting the mind out of the way is, is, uh, uh, mm. been a big part of it too. It has. And I, th and I think it's, you know, when I, as I talk to a lot of people, so some people don't have the chatter going on, in aspects of our lives that other people do and vice versa. I've noticed this, um, you know, you can tell that we're obviously made up of infinite frequencies and, you know, some of them you're stronger, you know, or more aligned or have a, you know what I mean? And vice versa. So a lot of that seems to be coming together. It's weird because you'll see people writing the same thing yeah, yeah. at the same time in their Absolutely. own way. And, you know, and it's, it's getting more frequent. And having parallel experiences with others. I've got a friend, I can start feeling wonky and she'll call. Well, she'll start feeling wonky. And I'm like, I have to get a hold of Brenda. And so we were um, discussing and it was like last Saturday, you talk about the weekend, Saturday, something happened. And I feel like the old matrix completely unplugged. It's not that we don't still see it. It's like it's getting distant as we move away from it. And we replugged into a new operating system. That's what it felt like. Yeah. And boy, for about three days, uh, it was not this weekend, but last weekend, for about three days, I just felt emotional, yeah. crying, anger was coming up and the duality chatter in my mind. It's like, I can see this perspective and this is my truth. And yet I'm hearing all this over here and I'm like, I don't even know what to do with you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's funny because you, you, you know, it used to be that that was the dominant voice and then you would hear that kind of intuitive higher voice just, mm -hmm on the outskirts. And now to me, it's not all the time, but, but a lot of the time I can hear that voice running. It's like, I'm standing over here mm -hmm, mm -hmm. kind of in silence, really, you know, or, or yeah. in intuitive flow. You More know? like you're an observer. You're just watching it. Yeah. Yeah. Or both. Or both. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. that's, that's how it feels to me. Uh, that period you're talking about though, we went through it. Uh, every, everywhere I turned around, people were, you know, cause I think Monday was the first, so that Saturday mm -hmm. would have probably been the 27th. Um, mm -hmm. But yeah, that the first, the second, the third, the fifth. I mean, it was just like, bam, 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 bam. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. we wouldn't have designed it this way if we couldn't do it. <laughs> That's right. We wouldn't be here if we hadn't have this. If we hadn't done this before. So I think we're 
we're, we're pros coming back and remembering. And so the more we stay connected with that, that truth, the less mm. we are affected by the mind chatter. Or if we have that negative or polarity coming forth, we know that it's just something that's coming up for healing. It's, it's speaking loud because there's still one more little something we need to clear with that, uh, a little attunement we need to do. And my <clears throat> relationship with my daughter uh, was uh, a catalyst on the Sunday, which would have been the 28th, and we had gotten into something that was very uncomfortable for both of us, but I, we were fine. But that was what set off the emotion. And I, thought, I have dealt with this before. Why is it coming up again? This has been a long, long time since I've, I've dealt with this. And um, yeah, it was like, well, you just you just have one more little piece of, of something to clear with that. So, That's the universe's famous last words, right? <laughs> no, there's just one little piece left there. One little piece left. And so it's like, okay, so how do I treat this? I, I treat it as if it were uh, a child that had been wounded that's still carrying some kind of trauma. And I just pick her up and I hold her and I say, okay, I, I realize this is um, our time together and you want to act like a brat and I'm just going to watch you. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm not responsible for whatever you're doing yeah. right now. <laughs> <laughs> Mine's more like I grab the 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 little boy and I put him in my hair. arms, <laughs> and he'll say, "What's going on?" I'm like, "I don't know. Hold on." <laughs> yeah, hold on. You're about to take uh, a ride. <laughs> but you know, this is an important subject. I really feel like these uh, experiences that we're having, we you know, to how do you explain it? But like, you got two streams running, like you said. Yeah. You got the two yeah. voices that are there. They're just taken on different roles or they're, you know, less, less or more effectual or however you want to put it. But uh, the, the thing that I'm referring to is, and you know, I don't want to get personal with you. You can talk about whatever you want or not. Uh, I'm talking in general terms, but uh, you know, we've all gone through this, this, this thing, right? This transition that we're calling ascension. Mm -hmm. And it's one thing, like if I go if I go back ten years, my story was a lot like other people's, where there was a series of traumas that just went, you know, and woke you up. Yeah. And it's one thing to see that, but it's another thing to see, and I've seen a lot of it, people going through major uh, life changes, like you know, in, in terms of a divorce or mm -hmm. you know, somebody uh, transitioning or, or an illness. Uh, you know, it's one, another thing to see that happening in 2020 and 2019 and 2021. And I think, uh, you know, it's beneficial to talk about it because, you know, there, there's so many different ways to do things. But how do you how did you get through it? How do you deal with it? Or maybe I think the question we should be asking is, how are we dealing with it? Yeah. <laughs> how can yeah. we deal with it? Because it, as we know, the universe's famous last words are, oh, there's just a little bit more. <laughs> Well, for me, the connection that I have with the divine it has got to be the most important thing, because if I can stay centered within myself and in my 18 inch tube, which I'll talk about in, in the Celestial Shaman book, if that energy in my tube is where I'm connecting all of my chakra and all of my body and all of my thoughts and my emotions, I can stay stable, even though I'm crying and experiencing this polarity and holding two emotions that are very opposite one another and still have peace in my heart, knowing this mm. too shall pass. I'm going to get through this. I've done this before. I've been through hard times. As long as I stay connected, I will be okay. Yeah. And so it's yeah. going back to that, going back to the, the heart space, like you said, out of the head and into the heart. And it's not that our minds aren't useful. We have to have them. My goodness. Mm. How, how can you even drive a car without your, your mind, you know? But it's like we, that's not in control. It's yeah. coming into a harmonized uh, balance. Yeah. yeah, and that's I think that's just what some of this is. We just get a, a it's like a balancing scale, and sometimes we get a little more like here, you know, here, here you go. There's a little bit more to do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, and you're like, oh, okay, so I'm gonna have to bring in more of my higher power then yeah. to help balance that. I'm gonna have to bring in more of who I am. Uh, to deal with that and and to see myself as who I am. This is just another lesson, another experience for me to draw closer and to remember who I am. Yeah. Yeah. And I think your your experience too of a week ago is kind of uh, indicative of something that might be a new a new uh, uh, 
aspect or an expanding aspect, and maybe it's just my perspective, but, and that is like, so you had a, you know, I guess like a, a family type of entanglement, you know, emotional mm -hmm. emotion mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Yeah. And it triggered you into, or not triggered, or it was a catalyst. Yeah, I'd say for that's you. a good trigger. Three, yeah. <laughs> three, you know, three days of, you know, we've all been there curled up in fetal position or laying on the couch <laughs> watching Netflix and just not even being there, you know. Um, but what I'm getting at is it, it feels like this one about a week ago is what happened to me. And I noticed it because it hadn't happened to that extent in the wall, which I would call right. a purge, a purge. Right. Exactly. And the purge, right? And so the purge is physically purging in different ways with my body, like mm -hmm. high sweats or, or, or dry skin or, I mean, and then of course the other types of purging, you know, where things come up that you weren't conscious of and all that. But what I'm trying to say is it, it like, it, it, can, it doesn't have, to me anyway, it doesn't have to purge a particular way. It might be I go for a walk or mm -hmm. I make music or mm -hmm. I try to write something or I lay down or I just turn the TV on and veg or whatever. Um, it, you know, it, it feels like once it starts, like you said, it will pass. You just yeah. have to ride the waves out there. Yeah. Yeah. And that's being fully present in the moment and not trying to escape it. It's, it's being with that and going, I know this is serving a higher purpose. Now, how can I move out of the way so that God can do what he, she needs to do with this thing that's still needing some a little bit more. <laughs> and so a lot of times that's just me being still and being quiet. Or like you said, I love that you brought up the fact that we can just veg out from some of this. We get so entangled with the conversation and in, in our minds sometimes mm -hmm. um, that actually throws us into a tailspin because then we just go on loop with it. That's right. Um, for me, and my craft room has been a, a, a savior to me this winter. Um, it, my mom helped me uh, set it up and, and around Christmas and I brought all of my crafting supplies and I had some in the closet here and some downstairs and some over here and I got it all in one space and I'm like, Okay, <laughs> creating, 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 yeah. even if it was just gluing two pieces of paper or, or just seeing how many giblets I could cut up with scissors, anything to just get my mind off what's going on in the world. Just mm -hmm. be here right now, create something, uh, put on some beautiful music, go watch something on Netflix. Uh, I have worn YouTube out with crafting tutorials. <laughs> <laughs> watching crafting teacher what else can i make <laughs> there you go and and then you know because i mean so much of our work has been um you know consciously you know pursuing shadow or or dealing mm -hmm. with it or dealing mm -hmm. with fears mm -hmm. and it, you know and i guess what we're doing is um you know integrating the people call it zero pointing these polarities yeah. And, and I know for myself that um, the biggest things that have, are, the, the, you know, the biggest expansions I've had in terms of that type of work has been with fellow mirrors of myself, particularly mm -hmm. family, <laughs> exes, mm -hmm. business mm -hmm. associates. I mean, uh, when, when you can look at them and really see yourself in them and vice versa as one. Oh, yeah. And that's not something you can just say, right? I mean, you just can't. You, you can't lie to yourself and say, okay, we're one now. <laughs> no, <laughs> it doesn't work that way. Uh -huh. it's, a, it's, a, it's an experiential body, fully engagement of the body itself and everything, all the other bodies. Yes, yes. Yeah. And, and we talk about that some more in, in the book in Celestial Shamanism. I give some actual <clears throat> physical tips and exercises that you can do that helps connect the physical body uh, and, and align the vagal system, the vagus nerve, the, and align that with the, all of the systems of the body. And we can walk through that before we close. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And, tell, and me do first, that, tell me first, though, what is I've heard it and I'm not a good light worker. <laughs> I'm not a <laughs> conventional light worker. What is the vagus nerve? Can you can you explain? Uh, the vagus please? nerve is one that comes down uh, in the front of the body, and it's uh, it's the one. I'm not sure exactly what it does, but it my my son had problems with it, so I was familiar with it. He kept passing out mm. um, from it because there was something going on with that, and it has to do with uh, equilibrium. But um, the it has the capacity to sync up the other systems of the body. It's like the major nerve in, in the 
right, right. running, running uh, parallel. And um, somebody else must, could probably tell. It must, yeah, it must run in the spine. Well, I would think it would run in the spine. Mm -hmm. And if it's run, running in the spine because we're so electric, mm -hmm. uh, you mm -hmm. know, then that would mean, you know, because of that, that space in between chakras and physical, right. physical you know, physical mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> equipment. Yeah. Like yeah. the, the nervous system. I mean, we've had a couple of people on the show uh, talking about the nervous system in a, in a very powerful, strong, you know, well-explained way. So there is something to that. There's something going on with nerves and yeah, our, Candace, our, Candace yeah. got it over here. Look at the look in the chat. The vagus nerve carries an extensive range of signals from a digestive system and organs to the brain and vice versa. It is the 10th cranial nerve. And now it went down too far. Let's see if I can. Extending from its origin in the brain stem through the neck and the thorax down to the abdomen. So it's actually, yeah, that's a big deal. 10th mm -hmm. cranial nerve. I wonder how many we have. 12, <laughs> probably 12. <laughs> I'm probably the woo-woo girl. I don't do anatomy. <laughs> <laughs> so speaking of, speaking of woo-woo, now I don't recall. I don't. Re I, I recall this from our uh, our, our first show uh, a year and a half ago. Uh, you were a devout Southern, probably Baptist, or okay. And you had. I, I I don't remember if you were already speaking in tongues, but I remember you telling me. I think I do. Let's test my memory. Uh, You're doing great. I, th I, I think I remember you started doing light language in front of somebody and it just came out of nowhere or something like that. And uh, to that degree, uh, Joe Delaney says we do have 12. So isn't that yes. interesting? Oh, um, okay. But uh, yeah. Oh, what I was going to ask you, the woo woo thing. So there's been a change in the woo woo thing too. Like regardless mm -hmm. of how a person enters that field, I've seen a lot of people having, you know, more experiences, new experiences. Uh, how's your, how's it been for you? New experiences. Yes. Like the one, you know, that I was talking about where I'm jumping timelines. That's been just recently. Um, maybe I was doing it more often in my sleep because I feel like I was visiting other places, but it's more conscious. Yeah. And, and the walk-ins. I know when I was um, contemplating leaving my marriage and I knew that it was going to inevitably come and that I would be going solo with my mission. And I had been praying about when do I do this? When, how do, what's the timing on it? Um, you know, because I'm just staying waiting on something to happen. And um, in that, the timing was that we had a gathering and I think there was 12 people there at the house and uh, staying for a three day weekend. And at the last day, my ex asked the group to pray for me. And this was a group of light language speakers. So they were carrying some major codes and some, some very authentic power. When they prayed for me, I felt something shift within me. And I thought, Oh my God, I think I'm having another walk in. Oh boy. <laughs> Again, really? And so the, within three days I had told my spouse I was leaving. We put the house on the market. Um, big changes started occurring. I was um, looking for houses, didn't know where I was going to be and felt so empowered. I had not felt that the entire time I had to just wait for the perfect timing. And when that shift happened, it was instant. And I moved through that divorce with very little emotion. It's not that I didn't have compassion. Um, it's not that I didn't feel, but it's just that I was at that higher vantage point watching all of this unfurl on my behalf, knowing that it's all working out just the way it's supposed to. Hmm. And I've stayed on that consistently. There's been a few ups and downs, but I've been able to hold that vibration uh, ever since then. So yeah. I think that whatever that energy that came in um, to support me, maybe it was a future self or a higher self or whatever, it's still with me. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're pulling in a lot of aspects. I'm, I'm, I've always struggled a little bit, and I've had a lot of people come on and talk about walk-ins. Morgan wrote a pretty interesting post on walk-ins last year, and yeah. uh, and I don't really get it. <laughs> I can remember times that, 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 you know, those those pivotal times, those seminal soul moments when your life turns upside down, kind of like what you just went through, <laughs> and 
and there, there is something that comes out in you. I don't know if that's a walk in. I mean, the way things have been going, I think I'm going to walk in every, you know, like three a day or something. And it's like every time you clear something, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know what I mean? But mm -hmm. uh, yeah. And so that the, the Mandela effect type thing, uh, the, mm -hmm. the shifting timelines type thing mm -hmm. to me, that has for, and I don't know why, but it has more of a galactic feel. It, it's different than like say angelic or archangelic, mm -hmm you know, or even other types of divine essences, even like the Kuan Yin's and the Jesus and, the, you know, but I don't know, there's something about the timelines to me that feels very galactic. I don't know. How about you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, totally does. It, it, in fact, it's become, you know, I tried going back to church. <laughs> I did. And it was, was, it, was it a square things. peg? Was it, was it a square peg in a round hole type thing? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um, but I was just feeling that I needed to go back and, and you know, in the back of your mind where you feel like you're going to do something someday, but not today. Mm -hmm. Well, after I had left that marriage, I started feeling I'm going to go back to church someday. And I'm like, no, no. But it was just so strong that if I didn't follow that guidance, I knew I was going to be missing something. Yeah. And so for about 10 weeks, you know how that synchronicity works and, and this falls into place and this gives you confirmation. And then there's another confirmation. Well, I had the feeling and then I was becoming friends with my next door neighbors. And uh, we were talking a little bit about it and she invited me to church. And I'm like, yes, it just popped out of my mouth. I'm like, oh, God, what did I just say? I just told her I'm going to church with her. Yeah. And I jumped in both feet, started with the Bible study, the small group, the Sunday morning worship. And I was having a wonderful, wonderful time. It's like something from my past had stepped in and had to clear up something right. that I had left undone in my religious programming. Yeah. I had to go back into that setting full force. And it was like I was living that aspect was living through me to redo the codes. I mean, we're doing worship and I'm doing light language. You know, it's loud. Nobody cares. <laughs> and I'm having the biggest time. Well, then it was the square peg and round hole thing started happening, which I knew was, you know, I, I knew going in that this. I'm not going to be able to be who I am and express all of my woo woo stuff. And I don't want to pretend and confess that I believe all these rigid things that, you know, you, you know the, the thing that got me was the day that the pastor stood up there and um, we just had a wonderful worship and I was, you know, still vibrating and feeling in. And he started preaching about exclusivity, non tolerance for other people who don't believe like us and um, how we needed to be ready to defend what we believe. And I thought, oh, boy, I can't do this. Did you go nuclear? <laughs> no, no, the energy hit me so bad I was almost sick. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it yeah. hit me physically. I could physically feel the energy. And I'm like, I have to get out of here. And I had gone with my neighbor and I said, I'm going to have to process this a little bit. And so I just gave her a hug and I grabbed my coat and my purse and out the back door I went and I hadn't been back. So it's just, you know, whatever I needed to accomplish was accomplished. I still don't even 2020. I don't have clear sight mm -hmm. on it, but something happened and it cleared up something. It, it really feels, did. you know, the feel of it feels like, uh, like we've traveled a lot, you know, obviously. Uh, and, and people, you know, they talk, you mentioned grid work that people talk about grid work, mm -hmm. but there, there's something to, it feels like, you know, retracing your steps. Mm -hmm. Like I, I just went through that. I went back to Texas. It wasn't really expected. Um, you know, we, we go down there to my hometown, which I hadn't, I hadn't seen these people, a lot of them in over 10 years. But uh, so we go down there and that big storm hit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so no water for four days. Uh, <laughs> then my uncle uh, had, who had checked in uh, to the hospital for an outpatient gallbladder on the first, I think I want to say the first of February. He ended up, you know, three weeks catches COVID in the in the uh, hospital, evidently, and and he passed. So oh. there was people came in from out of town. I mean, so there was all this stuff happened, right? Yeah. yeah. And and really, I mean, of course, having Morgan, you know, we talk about this stuff all day. You could see, you know, from an energetic standpoint, it was very easy to see. Mm -hmm. You know, it was very easy to see that uh, things were being, you know, I guess uh, timelines were collapsing or however you want to put it. 
convergence of, you know, uh, more of a singular um, oneness type of thing. Yeah. So that, that's, that's what it sounds like to me. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and that's exactly what it felt like to me. In fact, I was uh, working with a friend of mine who is a light language intercessor, uh, Jennifer. We meet on Mondays on the Monday before we have our, uh, group like language intercession on Wednesday and we get a little insight about what the group is going to be working on and she had already been seeing me go back to church and she saw me working with the portal uh, that is at the location of that church There's a portal there I was working with that I was working with grids I was working with ancient ley lines and portals um, while I was in church it was important for me to be in that building doing the work right right yeah yeah, that feels right. And, and sometimes, and again, of course, it's not even, you know, what you're doing there. It looks like it's just this spot, right? <laughs> but it's, it's infused into the grid. And it certainly because of the multidimensional, it, it's affecting things everywhere, just like all of our actions are. I remember uh, years ago when, when I was in the early days of the studio, I, li I lived next door to a cemetery and I would go there every night. And that's where I would do my work. And then they had me walking around the city block and doing doing work with the buildings uh -huh. but mm -hmm. one night i was walking by uh you know the the main uh, office or <clears throat> you know where they have the uh, viewings of the cemetery and so as i'm walking by i was shown or called and i was shown one room in there and i still don't know what room it was because i didn't go inside but i went to the back of the building and i did the work like the type of work you're talking about as i was guided to and I understood that there was some type of network, like you're breaking down a network, just like we're building the grid. You know? Yes. Yes. So, so this stuff, you, you talk about this stuff five, 10 years ago, 15 years ago, you're not going to, you're not going to find an audience, but now <laughs> it's becoming, it's becoming common. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it, this is actually our life now. Yeah. It's not all that BS <laughs> in, in the mainstream media and all that other stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I had to be in the energy of it, you know. I had to actually go back in it, and and I was almost to the point where um, I was. My neighbor was kind of like she knew I played piano. She's like, "Go to." They were having some uh, meet today after church if you want to be part of the worship team. And she's over there elbowing me, and I'm going, "Mm mm, mm mm, no, I'm not getting that far in. You can't get out after that." <laughs> yeah. So, <right. laughs> yeah, and I had already left the, the Bible study by then, and. It's just, uh, you know, I, I love, love my neighbors. And when I'm with her, I feel that connection with my roots and with uh, not the doctrine, but the sweetness of mm -hmm. Christian people. You know, mm -hmm. it's the doctrine, it's the system, it's the beliefs that are so limiting and confining uh, us for and no more kind of thing that just puts me off about it. I wish we could go to church and do this. Right. You know, have this kind of fellowship. And this is my church now. That would be a 180 <laughs> in church. Right. Mm -hmm. But, you you know, the thing about it, too, you got to respect it. Just just oh, like yeah. you can find you can actually look. I went to I've told the story a couple of times. But when I first woke up and I was in, you know, going through a lot of trauma, I ended up in a Harris County jail for 34 days and uh, in a 25 man cell. And uh, uh, and it was a very enlightening spiritual experience. I could see energy like you can sometimes see in the church. For me, yeah. it would be going into a, a say a, a fairly empty Catholic church because I was raised Catholic because they have all the icons and they have all the artwork and I could see, you know, I look back now, I could see energy in something like that. But, uh, but like, uh, you know, with the, uh, the church, like my grandmother was a devout Catholic and and she was like, I mean, on it 24 seven. I mean, she wouldn't throw it on you, but she lived it in her essence. And she's come to me several times, mm -hmm. uh, you know, from the other side. And you can see the connection and you can see that what she was carrying wasn't just say like something I'm carrying. It was actually something to me more formidable mm -hmm. because it, and it, it was and it was rooted in that. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we can find it anywhere. You really. can and the fellowship, you know, you don't have to be around people that are not on the same way. You've got to be in the moment. And it goes back to that. To what is spirit urging me to do now? 
what, what this I'm standing in line at the grocery store. How can I be a blessing right now in this? How can I see the gift that's being presented to me and still bag my groceries and still pay for it? And, mm -hmm. And at the same time, not get weighted down by whatever else is around me. I mean, the, the Walmart energy or whatever. Um, but know that you have a purpose, a higher purpose, and that you don't have to go in that. Very empathic people going into that and going, oh, I'm here to change everybody. You know, I didn't go to the church with that. I did not go to mm -hmm. the church with the intention of changing anybody. Right. I went because it felt like it was right for me in that moment. Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's living in the moment and waiting for the confirmation. You know, it took uh, me thinking, well, one day I'm going back to church. And then that church at the end of the street, that was the one I knew I was supposed to go to. That happened to be the one that my next door neighbor went to. And it all worked out perfectly. But you have to follow that guidance. Yeah, that's right. You can't you know just follow it when it sounds like just, it's going to be. Yeah. You can't just follow it when it sounds like it's just going to be fun. Mm -hmm. when, it, when is it? You know, <laughs> I mean. I can make. I knew that was going to be hard. You know, there's a part of me that didn't want to do that, but I also knew that there was something I needed to do, and that it was for me. Mm -hmm. It was for me as much as it was for anybody else there, because I wasn't coming in there to blast them with my new ideology and my metaphysical beliefs, and I don't believe that. And I don't believe that. It's like I have to go there and be in that energy in order to transmute whatever is still active in me that's keeping me living small. Boom. From that programming. I've, I've got to and, that, and that template and that and that template of convincing people, you know, and, and bringing people over to the good side uh, can run just as well in the light worker circles. It can in the church. Absolutely. But by the same token, the the uh, template uh, that you infused into that church can be used just as effectively anywhere else. Uh, you know, when you when you said that. You know, one of the things I've had to check myself on over the years with Sology, it's almost 10 years now, is uh, am I trying to convert people? <laughs> yeah, it was probably more of an yeah. issue in the early days because there was a mm -hmm. lot of friction with the Christian community, you know, people that would come mm -hmm. in. Um, but I would, you know, there, to me, there's a difference between planting seeds. You know, like just I, I love people that make me think, you know, mm -hmm. just about something that you haven't considered because, yeah. you know, something was said to me the other day. Um I think this might be going on with you. And I said, well, you know what? It's not relevant to whether it's going on with me. What's relevant to me is, am I open to the fact that it might be true? And then I integrate that and I'm done. Right. Mm -hmm. it's so mm -hmm. like, that's Absolutely. another thing I see us doing too, is we're kind of getting past the stories. Mm, yeah. 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 And, and that was the thing with the church. It's very much uh, they bought into the narrative and they're not seeing the allegory, the hidden meaning behind it and mm -hmm. the Christ consciousness and the presence of God within you. All of that is kind of foreshadowed by all the gory stuff mm -hmm. and, and the bad stuff. And you're a sinner and you're going to hell and all this kind of stuff. And you got to believe this and don't believe that. And so, you know, you can get really mixed up in that. And I feel like that's why I was out of church for 18 years before I was ready to go back in it and do that work. Yeah. 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 It, it you know, it, you're going to find the same thing everywhere you go. My, uh, my best friend's father gave me that advice when I was 18 years old. And I got out of high school. Uh, and as an example, you know, last night Morgan had been processing off and on watching this series on Netflix and it's a period piece like 1500s, 1400s. And so I watched the last episode with her and we were just talking and she's like, man, you realize how barbaric these people were, you know, <laughs> like Kings killing their wives so that their son could be King and, you know, all this different stuff. And I said, well, yeah, but that stuff still goes on. I mean, it, it does, you know, mm -hmm. Vietnam was mm -hmm. like that. I mean, there was just all kinds of examples. Mm -hmm. So that, that energy is the energy is always there. All mm -hmm. the chaos, all the dark, all the light, whatever. And I, I guess that's a big part of our mission is mm -hmm. bringing that stuff to a central point. And nobody gave us an owner's manual. <laughs> no, they didn't. That, that was the thing. We got dropped off here and said, goodbye. Yeah, see you later. Right. <laughs> right. It, 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 yeah, it reminds me of when I uh, pledged a fraternity, which didn't work out. <laughs> Naturally, yeah. it wouldn't for me, right? But, uh, marriage, so they, that didn't work out. And yeah, right. So they all, <laughs> oh, don't start me on that one. <laughs> so they, they, we were in, I was in East Texas, which is, which is a rural 
type area, like the old South. And uh, so they, they pick us up. They take us over the state line to Louisiana, go down this long road about a mile and a half and drop us in the dark at two, two in the morning. Oh my goodness. You know, that's kind of what they did to us, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. We're making it, aren't we? We are making yeah. it. We're, we're here to do this and we've got it. You know, uh, think the thing that I learned when we were talking about that energy that came in around 27th, 28th, um, to me, it was the exact same thing that hit me when I was in church. I'm trying to tell other people what to believe. I'm trying to change them. I'm trying to make their life better. And they're not even asking me for that. And, mm. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, OK, big lesson here. And so that's what I was grieving all this mm. time. I can't make my daughter believe like I do. And I can't, you know, and she has the right to believe what she wants to. Why am I trying to tell her what to do? I don't have <laughs> I that's don't have right. a manual either. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> but that's what I'm learning right now. Non-judgmental. Yeah. Don't fix anything. Um that somebody else has not asked you to be a part of the remedy. That's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. It's like, it's been second nature. And you know, as you described that, that's a lot of what the energy that we experienced here was like through interactions. And, you know, it's like that stay in your own lane thing. And, you know, we talk about these things and these things have been talked about, but more like conceptually, in my opinion, you know, like uh, uh, cliches, uh, not that we were being disingenuous. We just didn't have the experience. Exactly. But what you're talking about, somebody who's been doing this a long, long time, and I would include those 18 years or, or the the, uh, the the Southern Baptist period as well, mm -hmm. because the devoutness and the and the commitment and dedication was there uh, just as it's, it is now. But mm -hmm. for you to make that statement about yourself, I think, is a perfect example of what we're all actually doing. And that is being honest with ourselves mm -hmm. and having to come to Jesus meeting to old school mm -hmm. and, and just, and getting past the resistance of the perfect imperfection that we are. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. So that I, yeah. I applaud you for that because but that's, yeah, that's big yeah. stuff. We have to stop judging ourselves too, as much as stop judging anybody else. And, you know, I've been teaching that, but this was just another shoe leather meets the road moment. And, yeah. you know, let's walk this out. Let's see what this looks like. Yeah. yeah. And it's, and I think that's another thing too, is like the, the judging others like mm -hmm. that's, you know, cause with all the uh, polarization and projection and mm -hmm. back and forth with election and Q yeah. and yeah. vaccines and masks in the mm -hmm. light worker circles. Mm -hmm. you know, Cause it was, mm -hmm. it was only three or four months ago when you'd see people saying, Hey, if you're not with me on this, get off my page. Right. Like, exactly. And it's like, Oh, more division, more separation. Yeah. But I think, it, but, but, it? I, but I, but I don't see it as much anymore. I, I see that maybe we're getting to the point where we're realizing, wait a minute, if I'm actually, trying to work out the judgments I have on other people. What are the judgments within myself that I'm not even aware of? Mm -hmm. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? So that, that this, and it happens different for everybody, but mm -hmm. yeah, and it was a perfect setup with my daughter. I mean, I needed that lesson. I needed yeah. exactly what she was saying. I needed to hear it exactly how she said it. And she was loving and very diplomatic. And I was trying my very best not to uh, lash out at her. Although, you know, there was some of that feeling of pushback within me. Mm -hmm. It's like, okay, just shut up and listen. Cause there's something she's saying here. And yeah. you know, this is, she's right. And she was right the whole time. Right. That's the thing. And it took me going through those three days of grief to come to the point where I accepted she's right and she, yeah. she deserves her own opinion. And now I need to check in with me. Right. And that's when it became apparent, you know, you're trying to change people. You don't have any business trying to change. Wow. Talk about a clear pill. <laughs> that's, not the, <laughs> that's not the red or the blue pill. That's the clear pill. Uh, that's a great point too. And, and uh, I think another thing that, I've seen happen too in my own experience. And again, I, I, I realize it's not just me or me and Morgan. It's, it's a collective thing that we're, we're starting to see the connectivity, which is actually a great indicator and a great, uh, you know, inspiration as far as our confidence goes, all of us. But uh, sometimes it's also like, I'm getting quieter, right? I'm listening more. And it's been a gradual thing. And it's, and, and it's like things, come at you and you just don't say anything mm -hmm. right you're not being rude you just don't know what to say mm -hmm. and then 
you know, as Morgan explains, that energy goes back to that person if you don't grab it. So they mm. sit in it. And a lot of times when we sit in our in our own words, because I remember getting from the universe 10 years ago, the most, you know, I'd be like, okay, who's talking to me now? You know, is it Jesus? Is it? And, and I remember the universe coming in and saying, hey, uh, the most important information and code that you're going to get from the universe is what comes out of your own mouth mm. in regard to yourself mm. or other people. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh. Wow. I, I'm in nursery school. <laughs> I didn't even Probably think of all. that. Yeah. yeah. It's but, good. Yeah. I don't know how much time we have, but I would love to walk us through that reset breath, quiet touch, and, and maybe Go do a, a light language transmission. How much time do yeah. I have to, the to bless? The, 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 uh, it's all yours. Take it. Oh, okay. Well, you stop me when I'm, when I'm done. <laughs> you just, just take us for a ride, you know, if it's okay. five, 10, 15 minutes, whatever. All right. Well, the first part of this is called quiet touch. And this was, uh, is, this is in my book. Brenda Williams and I have been friends for many years, and she uh, brought this uh, to my attention, and we've been working with it ever since. So the left palm has a chakra. Hmm. that if you'll just kind of look at it and feel into that, you'll feel the vibration there. You want to bring that and hover over the heart. And you may feel some kind of a magnetic pull there, or there may be some heat or something, and let's just... Place that right there where you feel the most connection. And just feel. Kind of get a baseline for where you're at now. And taking the right hand, looking at the palm chakra there. And bringing it to the lower part of the abdomen. Right above the pubic bone. And feeling that connection. Connecting with the body, connecting with earth, connecting with the cosmos, our source love like spirit, and just feel that. Notice if anything is shifting. Now in three, two, one, exhale through the mouth. Inhale through the nose. And exhale through the mouth. And now feel. Check in with the baseline. What changed? What shifted? Where are you feeling the energy? Yeah. And now placing the right hand over the heart. Completing that circuit. And I'll give a transmission in light language here. And then we'll go into the 18-inch tube and explain that a little more. Oravasindo la mahikara, hati shi dorovadi, onkolo vati jo darvola nueyaka, arasola vado trihomaka, brahmati ki visuku hara, harasikuni ananda hi. Oh, the Vakila Kuramokoka, bringing our cosmic celestial light into our body through the crown and into the heart space. And bringing it up into the throat and activating the thymus. Tuning and recalibrating. The routing within the brain and the neurological system. Bridging. Tuning and fine tuning. And 
and drawing that energy in through the entire body. Bring it through every cell on a quantum level and just allowing the divine instructions to unfold. The body knows what to do with these codes. Such a wise, wise body. Mm. And bringing these codes into the DNA, but also into the RNA, connecting the messenger RNA with the higher vibrational frequency and the resonance of who you truly are and bringing that back in. Plugging in. Yeah. And whatever needs to shift there, just let it. Notice the stillness in the mind and the quietness there. Notice the calmness in the emotions. Notice how relaxed the body feels. Any upgrades that need to come through, any downloads that are ready to be unloaded. We activate them now. Connecting with the ascension grids of the new earth, the new vibration, the new frequency there, new operating system to support the quantum field that the body is now connecting to. And now noticing around you in 18 inches in all directions, you have an energy field. This is not your auric field. This is your personal frequency band, a tube or cylinder of light that stretches into the cosmos, stretches into the earth. Open at the top. You can receive your downloads, your codes into your field, into the field around the body that's going to feed and nourish and supply the body with what it needs. That's going to also supply by all the chakras that is needed with the nutrition that is needed, the, the spiritual quantum nutrition that the DNA RNA needs now to make this shift. I'm connecting now through the bottom with the tube open at the bottom, connecting with the earth, and now feel, just taking your hands, feel what is going on with your tube not your aura this place here is uninfiltratable you, it cannot be contaminated you can be distracted from it you can be so plugged into what's out there that you forget that you have this field but it's always there and it's always vibrating it's just tuning into that station tuning into this frequency that is you this is your field so feel into it and get familiar with it where do you feel the most energy in it? Feeling around the body in this tube, what does it feel like? Is there a temperature? Is there a temperature inside this? Is there air inside this? Do you feel air blowing, wind moving? Do you feel heat? Noticing this. This is where you live. This is where you live. This is where you live and move and have your being. This is your God essence right here around you. You don't have to go seeking for it out there. It's here. It's always here. You can connect into it. Sometimes it just means we have to let go of the programming and the distraction and the fatigue that we've gotten ourselves into physically in order to come to this quiet stillness, this place, and find that you have everything you need right here, right now. Irovasinova, 
Ito roba kiro ko shimanta kora ba kiro sukuria andana yava isa una. And even though you may feel a little altered or expanded, there's no place to come back to because this is where you are. <laughs> you don't have to come back to this room or anything else. This is where you live. This is your vibration and your frequency. There's no need to go anywhere else or come back to it. It's here. Be that. I think it's shaped like a cylinder because we've been like a dog chasing our tail. <laughs> Creating, <laughs> Creating a... <laughs> that was beautiful. That was powerful. Thank you for allowing yeah, me. Yeah, she's the real. Yeah, you're the real deal. Oh, and I and I am prejudiced. I'm biased because I'm, I can I can relate to the southern, the southern uh, Christianity. Yeah. Even though I, I started out Catholic, I, I started going to Baptist. I want to say like sixth grade. Mm -hmm. Freaked me out because I've never been in a in a what I consider a church. I guess it's a church, right? I mean, uh, I've never been in a. You walk in a Catholic church and you can hear a pin drop. There can be five thousand people in the church and you can't hear. You, there, there's no sound. You walk into a Baptist church and it's like, it's like a picnic. <laughs> everybody's, everybody's jumping in the aisles and yeah, powerful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's 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 so interesting the, uh, the connectivity too. Like if you just take someone like yourself, I mean, obviously you've got your your light languages. It's very good. It, it, seems, it sounds like multilingual, multi-universal mm -hmm. lingual and certainly galactic and other uh, types of essences. But also then you have that lineage to that deep south religious fervor. You know, and I don't mean the doctrine or the dogma. I mean the, the heart like you were talking about, mm -hmm. which even then when I hear you, and I think I told you this last time because you did some light language. I think you might have even had an instrument. Um, and, uh, and, uh, but like you can hear the primitive, the primordial, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Very shamanic. In, in, mm -hmm. Indigenous. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We're all, uh, remixing everything that we're being given mm -hmm. and that we experience. And then a beautiful blending of all that where I can pull on Bible verses that still comfort me to this day and, and pull that out as an affirmation to spark my day or um, praying in, in the spirit and light language or grabbing my drum and doing my tribal thing. And, you know, just that's what you did last time. Yeah. 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 And, and it's, it's fun to be able to blend all of that. And I'm thankful for the, the clientele and the ministry that I have that are open to all of that, because uh, some people don't resonate with the drum as much. And I may want to get the yeah. singing bowl with them and I'll do the, yeah. um, you know, the crystal bowl or I'll go to the keyboard and play a song for them. If that's what uh, spirit is showing me, uh, what, what does this person need? And there again, it's tuning into the moment and listening to spirit. Um, what does this client need? What does this moment require in order yeah. for me to be the blessing? You know, I did a, a, a show last week with a guy, a 25-year-old who's been on a few times. When I first met him, he was living in, I think, Palm Beach, and he was living homeless on the beach, eating only coconuts. <laughs> but he's a really interesting kid, and I didn't know it because we've probably done six, seven shows. His name's Dane Jones. Anyway, we connected the other day. He was about a half hour late, but not because... Uh, any kind of confusion like that. No, this was this was he was on another planet <laughs> he was on another planet when he came on the show but it was great because it was very pure his heart was totally open and he and i didn't know that he had at that age especially was kind of interesting uh he had a uh he was founded in christianity the bible period mm -hmm. so he pulled the bible out he said i want to share this with you and it was corinthians and I'd never heard it before. And it was about love. Mm -hmm. And it, you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. I, I listened to that and it was like the greatest thing I've ever heard or read. I mean, and I've, you know, I like to write and I've read a lot of books over my lifetime. But yeah, there's still some powerful, powerful things in there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And other sacred texts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I got to say, I didn't know what was going on and when i saw you i remember you very clearly how you looked before yeah and, 
uh, and I said, wow, she looks very different. But I wasn't talking physically because you do look fantastic physically, by the way. I don't know what, you, I don't know what you're drinking, but I, I want some. My hair just, yeah, last time you saw me, my hair was black. But, uh, and yeah. mine was red, probably. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was red. It was red. But your, your energy was very different. Oh, really? Hmm. Yeah, absolutely. It was very different. Hmm. So it's a, uh, yeah, it's uh, whatever you've done, you know, you've, you've, uh, you've obviously, you know, the proof's in the pudding, right? Hmm. Hmm. It's I'm very sweating. intense. Yeah. It, the light language has become more intense just, uh, just in the last few, three, three, four months even. Yeah. And, and, you know, it was during the lockdown where we weren't really going to the hairdressers and all that kind of stuff that I stopped coloring my hair and just felt like, wow, that that's just that feels right to me. Um, and then, uh, you know, I was keeping it short uh, for a long time. And then it was like, I don't want to wear a mask. This is me being in resistant. I don't want to wear a mask to go get my hair cut. So I'm just not going to get my hair cut. That was me, the little rebel here. Mm -hmm. And so. Um, I just let it grow and now it's like well i could i could wear a mask and go get my hair cut but it's not no i think i want it long i like it i like the color i like the color I don't let it grow long so you know, i'm always shifting I'm always changing i like the color i wish mine looked like that it's natural <laughs> salt and pepper yeah mine's mine is too it looks more yeah, like my grandfather's hair <laughs> yeah mine's like spray painted white recently i don't know what's going on so yeah I, I'd love to catch up with you again in, in 2020. Yeah. How do people get in touch with you and what, if anything, are you offering online? Oh, okay. Uh, we are one in spirit.com. We, yeah, we are, somebody can write that down. We are I one in, in spirit.com. I got it. Cause I'm the only one that can put it on all the platforms. Hang on. Here we go. Okay. We are, we are one in spirit.com. Yes. From there, you can find my books you can find light language audios that you can listen to right there without paying a dime, or you can download them for like a dollar and a quarter or something like that. Um, then there's the, um, what is light language? What is a walk-in? Um, what is this? All of that's on there. A way to contact me is on the website, the blog with lots of articles on the website, the events page. That's the one you want to look at to see what I'm up to next right now. I am offering um, a follow-up coaching session to those who have gone through my beginner light language activation class. Like if you wanted to activate your light language, there's a class that you go through and it's pre-recorded. You just download it and go at your own speed, do it as often as you want to. And then we do a follow-up. Let's get together now, kiddos, and let's let's talk about what you experienced ask me some questions. What is it that you might uh, need help from me? And so it's a coaching just with right. the beginner group. So everybody in there is just starting out. Okay. Right. Then after that, you can graduate to the intermediate and we're still going to do some coaching, but you're already speaking the light language. Now you, you got the basics and now we're going to move on a little deeper and I will walk the people through um, what's your hold up. What's hanging. What is it that you feel like is holding you back from sharing it? Are you, are you just feeling scared? Are you feeling shy? Is there's, is there some woundedness that we can clear in order to help you move on and progress in using your light language for your own edification, as well as to help others and the planet. Uh, right. Light language goes really good with grid work. If anybody's doing grid work <laughs> and then there's the advanced class and that is a hang on to your seat wild ride. And the reason we don't just throw people in there is because they're just really some are not ready mm -hmm. to do that because everybody is speaking at once and the energy can be very, very cacophonic. It doesn't sound that way, but if you'll tune in and look at the chat. Everybody is bringing in similar things. It's just amazing. The confirmation that comes through with that. And then we'll stop. Has anybody got a message for the whole group that we all need to hear? Wow, that's that's mm -hmm. cool. That's mm -hmm. very cool. Because is there any good. interpretation? Does anybody have an interpretation of what that was? And so is that that one. Yeah, that one is uh, takes me a couple of weeks to rest from. <laughs> That's like yeah. that's like every show now for me. <laughs> yeah, integrating it's a lot. Truth. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. been like yeah, but uh, yeah, but that's a really good. That's a great thing uh, mm -hmm. because we've actually had I think I want to say three different groups. They were women 
you know, five, seven, where they would get, they'd met online. One, one of them was a local group actually, but the other two they'd met online from all over the world. And so, you know, they would do it regularly and they would work consciously, very similar to what you're talking about. And uh, I said, Hey, let us in on your world. Let us see what you do. So we, we did a couple of shows like that, but I think it's important because mm -hmm. that to me is, is like a great description. You know, like say metaphorically speaking, the round table of spirituality where nobody's sitting at the head right. and you're actually, you're actually pooling all of your resources and so much goes with that, you know, trust, mm -hmm. uh, honesty, you know what I mean? I mean, authenticity and, mm -hmm. and you know, real intention and putting everything aside to try to try to expand. Mm -hmm. through everybody's uh, energetic fields combined. It's a vortex. Yeah. yeah. Beautiful. Totally Beautiful. Yeah, a resonant field. We create a resonant field. It may not look like that. So if you come into the middle of it and you didn't have all the warm up and kind of like, you know, getting getting the water warmed up and getting before, just jumping into the hot tub, you're going to feel like you're boiling. So <laughs> we want to come in gently and then, you know, let the energy build. And then the funny thing is, you know, this is so synchronized with spirit and with the resonant field that everybody will sometimes just stop speaking all at the same time. And it just gets quiet. Isn't that crazy? How did we know to do that? We didn't. We were just following the flow. We were flowing. Right on. So with that brilliant, uh, this has been a great, let me just say it, one hour, 11 minutes and <laughs> one, one, one. <laughs> and 11 seconds. Oh my goodness. So how perfect is that? That is so perfect. All blessings to you and your loved ones and all your endeavors. And uh, look forward to seeing you later in 2021. You take care. Thank you, Todd. Blessings. Love you. <laughs> Love you. We'll be back in 30 minutes with a